never staying in one den long enough to build up a telltale scent trail. But there is one enemy that Manana cannot outwit. And JV knows it all too well. A female leopard, which we called Sunset Bend Female, contracted psychoptic mange. And I believed at that time that it was a natural process and that I should not interfere. And I watched and filmed while she deteriorated and eventually died. And filming her body, I realized I had it within my power to save her life. And I'd let her go. When Manana and her cubs contract the same mange, he is forced to make a controversial decision. Sarcoptic mange is caused by a mite that eats away the skin. In the wild, it's a death sentence. But this time, JV won't stand by and watch Manana die. To treat the mange, JV will dart a drug called ivermectin directly into Manana and her cubs. Elman tracks Manana to a dense grove of trees. One cub is on the ground below. The other in the low branches. They must move fast. The darts will hurt. Manana may see it as an attack on her and the cubs and fight back. One of the few times when the dart hit Manana that I saw her really angry. The risk is worth it. Three weeks later, Manana and the cubs make a full recovery. JV's intervention gives Manana another 14 years of life. And her cubs survive the ordeal to become some of Lundalozi's most successful leopards. But Manana's next litter is not so lucky. A new threat terrorizes her territory. Male leopards. Territorial males kill cubs that aren't theirs so that females can bear their cubs instead. When two competing males invade Lundalozi from either side, it turns into a killing spree as they repeatedly destroy each other's offspring. After losing two consecutive litters, Manana makes a move to end the slaughter. She seeks out one of the males and entices him to mate.
Like domestic cats, microscopic spines on the male's genitalia make mating a painful process for the female. A process she must repeat every 15 minutes, day and night, for up to five days straight. The repeated couplings force Manana's body to ovulate and help to ensure conception. When the ordeal finally ends, she crosses her territory to find the other male and endures it all over again. By mating with both males, Manana deceives them into thinking the resulting cubs will be theirs. It's an extraordinary strategy that only a few lepers have ever been seen to employ. And it pays off. Three months later, she has a single tiny cub. Usually, there are two or three cubs in a litter. Lions may abandon single cubs to bear larger litters. But Manana chooses to keep this only child. The rocky den hides many inaccessible crevices, and its perimeter is guarded by dense thorn trees. A lion or hyena will have to work hard to reach the cub. Manana leaves it safely concealed in the rocks and heads off to hunt. But today, Manana's not the only predator on the prowl. There is one killer that can breach the den's defenses. And it's moving in, whilst Manana's attentions are elsewhere. failed, Manana heads home. She gives a soft contact call for her cub, but there is no answer. Something is wrong. It takes only a second to recognize the killer. An African rock python, swollen with a cub-sized meal. Manana risks her own life as she attacks her cub's killer. The python retreats into the thorns.
But Manana will not give up. For three hours, she lies silently, staking out the python's cave. At last, her patience pays off. The injured python finally makes a move. Manana is ready for the next round. She waits until it's clear of the cave. But there's no battle. A built-in reflex forces the snake to relinquish its hard-won meal. Under stress, pythons regurgitate their prey to shed the extra weight for a speedy escape. But Manana has abandoned the attack. She's got what she came for. After the python disgorged her cub, I thought Manana would go after that python and kill it. But there was no act of revenge. All she wanted was her tiny cub back. We tend to think of leopards as instinctive and animals without emotion. That is completely untrue. Manana carries the body away from the den and begins to consume it. Manana knows that her cub is gone. By eating that cub, I believe that she was going through a ritual, she was going through a ceremony, disposing of the cub, was one of the most emotional times I ever spent with her. And then, incredibly, for four days, she called for a cub that she knew was already dead. As a filmmaker, it's hard to just turn your camera on and capture the scene because it cuts very, very deep. Manana's grief is tangible, but losing cubs is a reality all leopard mothers must face. Of Manana's eight litters, only four cubs survived to adulthood. She can't afford to grieve for long. She must ensure her own survival. And to do so, she must.